So I just want to do a very quick review of what we have done so far. First thing we did is to find a provider, and the provider is the AWS one because we want to work with AWS. We configured the AWS provider so it could talk to the correct set of credentials to talk to the AWS API. We told it we're going to work in the US East 2 region. We defined a data source, and then we defined a resource. And then we saw that Terraform was able to create this resource, which used our data source, our AMI ID, uh, as part of the definition for it. So let's go look at the documentation super quick and just see what each of these pieces are to see how Terraform describes them. So the first thing is a provider. So Terraform relies on plugins. They're called providers. Configurations must declare which providers they require so Terraform can install and use them. Okay, we saw that. So what do providers do? They each provide a set of resources and data sources. So that's exactly what we saw. We defined a data source and we defined a resource and we had Terraform build it. Each resource type is implemented by a provider such as uh, the AWS one, which I think is managed by HashiCorp itself. Without providers, Terraform can't manage any infrastructure. So providers are the thing that provide the ability for Terraform to do what it does. Where do they come from? Well, a lot of them are in the Terraform registry. How do you use them? This is stuff that we're seeing in the course. So data sources, the first thing we did is define a data source. So a data source allows data to be fetched or computed for use elsewhere in Terraform configuration, which is exactly what we did. So use of data sources allows Terraform config to make use of information defined outside of Terraform. For example, we used Packer to create an image in AMI, and then we told Terraform to use this data source to find the AMI so that we could use it in a resource. And that resource was the thing that we had Terraform create, the uh, EC2 server. So resources are the most important element. Each resource block describes one or more infrastructure objects, such as virtual networks, compute instances, which is a virtual machine, a server, or other components. And that basically is all that matters for this definition. OK, so we saw we had an AWS instance be created. That's a resource that used our data source to find the AMI ID, which is a thing that was created outside of Terraform because we had Packer create that AMI. We defined how to create it, and that's that. And if we head in over here, we can see Terraform plan. And I think between videos, I actually destroyed all this infrastructure. So we can go ahead and see that it's actually going to recreate that instance because it's actually destroyed now, just because I didn't want to keep that server running in between videos. One quick thing I want to show you is a new command, Terraform FMT. FMT is a command you might be familiar with if you use Golang. This is going to actually format our Terraform configuration files. In this case, it did the cloudcast.tf file. And let's do git diff. DF is my alias for diff. And we can see what it changed. Really, just wait space changes. And I believe with Terraform, we can see that it might use two spaces for tabs instead. Let's go ahead and see. Yeah, see two spaces instead of four for tabs. So that's just all it fixed up there. And it also will do things like line up your um, equal signs here for definitions. Other than Terraform format, we saw Terraform plan. Terraform plan will do just what we saw before. It will say what Terraform plans and doing given your current infrastructure. We can even do an out flag here and then name something like output.hcl, I believe. This plan was saved to output.hcl. So now when we do terraform apply, do a help flag, we'll see terraform apply options and plan. So we can actually use that plan file we just created. So if we do terraform apply and we can do the output.hcl as the plan file, this one actually needs to replan itself. Otherwise it runs plan essentially right before it runs apply. In this case, we already have the plan with that output there. So now it's actually going to go ahead and just create that server directly. Perfect. Now that resource is created and inside the AWS account that this is running in, it is spinning up and booting up that server right now. 